So in this video, I'm going to talk about Olama in that Olama has added and announced this new feature called structured output. Now, before we go into the details, what this is, why is this feature important? We need to understand how large language models really work. The thing about large language model is that they tend to spit out information, text in our cases, most cases. And so the problem arises when we want this text that is spit out to be of certain type, to have certain fields. We might want it to come out as a JSON. So this has been a problem in many cases because you can't, in some cases, gotten better where you can prompt the AI, the model, to say the results that I want to get have to be in JSON format. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So it's very inconsistent, which is problematic because you can imagine if you're building an application that relies on receiving the data in the JSON format, if the model is always inconsistent in its type that is printing out, that is outputting, then we have a problem. And so that is the motivation behind having some sort of way in which models are are able to attach a type to the result that comes out. We can say we want this to be as a JSON and we actually get a JSON with structured outputs added into Olama. That means the models, when we call Olama models, we're able to do such things as, hey, I want this format to be in JSON and attached maybe some sort of validation. So you can see here we have, if you go to olama.com blog structured outputs, you can see in December 6, 2024, structured outputs were added. So you can read about that. Olama now supports structured outputs, making it possible to constrain a model's output to specific format defined by a JSON schema. All right, so we have, of course, the Python and JavaScript libraries. It shows here use cases for structured outputs include parsing data from documents, extracting data from images, structuring all language model responses. This is really important. This is key as I explained. What does that solve? Well, gives reliability and consistency, as I said, than JSON mode. JSON mode could be just one type. So now you can actually create different types that you want the model to extract and give you information as. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Of course, you need to have Olama installed locally. If it's very simple, say pip install, this is for updating. But if you don't have Olama installed, then this is going to go ahead and install it. If you have it, it's going to update. So this is Python. For JavaScript, this is what you do. And here is the curl that you can play around with right away. So I already have everything set up on my end here. Let me go ahead and show you how to get this to run real quick. Okay, so I have this curl that I'm running. It's actually the same. I changed the model to Llama 3.2 because that's what I have running. Again, make sure that you have Olama running in the background for this to work. This is all locally, you don't have to pay a dime. If you want to learn more about Olama, I have a full video on how to set up Olama. You can find somewhere on the top or in the description below, or you can just search on my channel. The model, Llama 3.2, that's what I have. We have the messages, role, content, tell me about Canada. And then stream is false. We want it just to give the full result. And then here is specifying the format. So we're saying we want the type to be an object. The properties is gonna be type of string. This is name, property. And then the capital is gonna be a string also type. And then we have capital string and languages in array. So all over to see more. Okay, so we have languages. Uh, we see it's an we say that type is an array, which means it expects to show type is array. And so for each item is going to be type string inside of this array. So it also says the required fields are going to be name, capital and languages. So now you are making sure that the model explicitly gives you this information in this format. Okay, if you'd enter. And of course, we're gonna see all showing up here. The content, now it has that format, so we have that information there. And as you can see, the output, as I say here, is returned format defined by JSON schema in the request. Now we can actually use the Python side of things in code, which I will show you, uh, using the Olama Python library. We can pass the schema as JSON object to format the parameter as either a dictionary or we can use Pydentic, which is recommended. Now, what is Pydentic? Now, I have a video where I talk about Pydentic um, as it relates to the Pydentic AI. So it's in a video that everybody loves and it's an amazing thing. So it's somewhere around here. Pydentic is a tool, is a library that allows us to 
have consistency in our data to make sure that our data that we're passing around our functions, our software that we're building, our applications and so forth, that the data is actually clean, consistent. Okay, so that's what Pydantic does. It's used as a validation tool. I have this Olama chat that I'm importing from Olama. So I have response, I'm passing in the message, and I'm passing the model. So essentially, the message as a list, you should know this, the role is user, and I'm saying content, tell me about USA. So what I'm going to show you is that I'm going to say response, then message, and just get the content, the response from the model, Llama 3.2. Let's run this and see what will happen. So I'm going to run this and you will see that the model, of course, is going to give me information about the United States of America. OK, very nice. As you would expect, we have this whole thing pretty verbose and that's fine. But the beauty here is that we can, again, with this new tool, with this new way of having structured output, we can change this, make it so that it confirms to what we want it to show as a result. OK, so how do we do this? Now we are going to use Pydentic as they recommended. So I'm going to import let's say from Pydentic import base model. So what that means is that we're going to use this base model, which is a class from Pydentic that is the mold for all of any classes that we're going to create that we can then use to pass along through the model to say use this model data class essentially to format to create the output as right the type is going to be this i want these fields to be part of the output so i have control on how the model is going to give me that information that i need instead of just a blob of everything that it can give to us when we ask a question as we see here so i have that model and next what we'll do here i'm going to create the class so what do you do just create a simple class and we're going to call this country, for instance, and then it's going to inherit from base model. OK, so in this case, I name capital instead of, instead of population. I could leave it as population. That's fine. Um, let's just actually add another one here called languages. And instead of a string, let's make this a list of strings like that. Just why not? And so this is going to be used. We're going to use this to pass along our model here, our chat, as we call, so that the results, it's not just going to be all of this. OK, very good. So what we do next is we hover over here. You can see now we have a model which we passed messages, tools, as you know, we have stream and we have then format that we can pass along. So it's JSON schema value. So I'm going to say format, not formatted. So format, that's a difference, country. Now, I'm going to use Pydentic because we're using Pydentic. There is a function I'm going to call called country model JSON schema. So what this will do, if you hover over, generates a JSON schema for a model class. That is exactly what this is doing here. OK, so it's going to generate a schema for this model class, which is the country, which is going to be the format that we will see. We'll say that we want to come out as the result to come out as the response. And so now what we can do, I'm going to just say country, for instance, country, instead of parts object, I'm actually going to say model validate JSON as such and pass the response as it comes in. So now we're going to take the response, which we get usually like this, as you saw, and we're going to pass it through this model validate JSON to confirm to this country model to say, I want to make sure that you are consistent with what I want you to show, which is what we define in our class country class. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. You will see the difference. So if I go ahead and run, so this is what we ran before a lot of stuff. OK, so I forgot to actually print. That makes sense. Let's go ahead and comment this out and print the country. OK, let's go ahead and run this. And just like that, you can see the output is indeed what we would expect. So now we have the whole JSON. Well, actually, we went in to get more information, but you can see the fields are fulfilled. So name, it pulls in the United States of America. Capital is that. Even the population is that, right? And language is English. Very good. So from getting all of that information, which can be useful, we want to say we just want X, Y and Z when you get the data and all of that is done in the back end. This is huge. 
because you can see the consistency that we get in our applications. Now, uh, once we have that, let's see, because it is a dictionary, I can tell you it is a dictionary because you can invoke these fields. If I say dot name, I should get just United States, which is true. If you go ahead and here say dot, and you can see, because it is part of this model, this object, JSON object, essentially, if you say dot, you can see we have these fields. We have capital, we have language, and we have we should have another field here. Let's see, name, as you see. Okay, so if you say language and run this again, you can imagine what we'll see is exactly what we would expect, which is a list, which is English. Okay, very good. So that means now we have a lot of control. So if I say, for instance, Canada, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to pass that through the model, and the model will know that the format that has to follow is going to be this country which is what we have here. Let's see what's going to happen now. Let's run, because I still i am getting the language field. I'm getting English and French, all right? Which is true. In Canada, they speak English and French, okay? And so now if I just want to get the whole thing, the whole payload, I can go ahead and run this. You can see that we have indeed this. All right, very good. So now this may not seem like a huge deal, but believe me, this is a big deal. If you have been working with large language models, models, you know this has always been a huge problem. Even though the model itself, if you tell it, okay, give me JSON or give me X, Y, and Z format, it will attempt to do that and sometimes it does. But this is a for sure way to know that you know exactly what type you're getting for uh, to use down the workflow. Okay, so this is huge. Go ahead and play around with this and thank you for your time and I'll see you next.